Hey there, Retro Games fans. This is Andy C from Pieces of 8-Bit. Um, today, uh, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, first thing, uh, I'm just going to give a health warning to this video that if you are a professional computer restoring type of person, uh, you might not want to watch this because I am not a professional computing restoring type of a person. Uh, and this video may well um, make you cringe. So uh, yeah, please look away now. Um, ultimately, uh, just to, to set the scene, so I, I was um, very kindly uh, by a very good friend of mine, his dad was having a clear out and uh, gave me a load of old BBC Micro equipment. Um, so the BBC Micro uh, was something that you've heard me talk about before. Uh, when I was at school, uh, it used to, we had one in the school in the mid early 80s um and uh, it came on a trolley and you knew if it appeared outside classroom it was going to be a good day so with the bbc micro sat on the trolley with the cub monitor um and we would go out and play educational games which was great um and i did know uh, one or two people that had one as well and there were some fantastic games uh, on there there were some sort of ones that were uh, quite not you know they were named slightly differently from the originals and looked maybe slightly differently from the originals but you had sort of variants of pac-man and things like that Played Jetpack on it, um, and uh, Chucky Egg is probably the game I remember most fondly uh, on the BBC Micro. So, um, a real 80s icon, uh, whereas the Amiga was something that, that I really remember as, you know, a, a desktop computer. Um, I remember really very fondly from the 90s. For the 80s, it was probably this, the Spectrum and the Commodore 64. These three machines were, were really iconic um and uh, something that 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 i just really really loved so when i heard that i would be able to get myself um some bbc micro bits and pieces i was very excited and uh, was very fortunate that it had all been really really well looked after it just been sitting in um an attic uh, space for some time so just was a little bit you know there was just lots of little bits and pieces to kind of get my head around um and work out ultimately what i wanted to do with it but I talk about a restoration, but it's not really a restoration. Um, essentially, just a real cleanup. Um, and uh, I've also uh, wanted to replace the power supply, which, uh, as I explained through the video, uh, you will understand why I wanted to do that. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of it, really. Um, so come along for the ride. Uh, this I'm, I'm not com a complete novice. I used to build PCs years ago, so I do know kind of. The basics and the beautiful thing about these 1980s computers is they are incredibly serviceable it's a bit like old cars you know in the in in the 70s and 80s uh i had a 1970s Vauxhall was my first car and and i know nothing about cars and yet i was able to service it reasonably comfortably there were things that i could could do um you take a modern 2024 car well i have an electric car so so i'm definitely not going to be servicing that but if i had a, if i had you know an internal combustion engine car i do have a, a a little uh a little um a drop top in the garage actually in fact which is uh sort of 23 24 years old uh, I couldn't really service that if I wanted to. I don't really know. Even a car that's sort of 20 years old uh, is just too difficult. And it's the same with computers. Um, so in the 80s and the 90s even to some degree, uh, you could quite easily service computers. And they were quite robust as well. Nowadays, uh, I can put components in a case, but I, I wouldn't be able to sort of actually service the electronics on any of those boards now, not with any, any degree of confidence. So this is quite nice. You know, I felt relatively confident about doing this. Um, so yeah, I, I, I went out to uh, my, my garage and this is the results of my restoration project, if you like. Uh, so enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Hey there, welcome to Studio 2 of Pieces of 8-Bit, otherwise known as my garage. Um, yes, uh, typical garage really, you know, we've got the car sitting over there and my son's drum kit sitting over there. So yes, but most importantly, my kind of impromptu uh, workbench is set over here. So uh, yeah, I'm going to just be talking you through um, ultimately how I'm going to just restore this BBC. And when I say restore, I don't really mean restore in the truest sense. I am not um, an electronic engineer. I'm not someone who's particularly good with electronics, um, period. So what I'm going to be doing uh, is just clearing it up um, and essentially just giving it a bit of love, replacing the power supply. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it really. So um, let me show you um, all the stuff that um, I've got. And then um, I'm just going to talk through uh, a little bit about uh, what I'm going to be doing. 
So yeah, ultimately I've got basically two uh, BBCs. So you can see there's one down here sitting on the chair. Um, there's one here, um, which is in um, really good condition. Um, and I'm gonna be basically taking this apart, um, giving it a nice good uh, clean and um, I'm replacing the power supply. I'll talk to you a little bit about um, the deal with the power supply momentarily. Um, this one is much the same as well. Um, so yes, um, and I'm gonna talk through a little bit about some of the other bits and pieces that I've also got, uh, which might be of interest. So let's have a look through um, some of the pieces that I've got and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so let's have a bit of a rummage through um, all the stuff that we've got. First and foremost, um, we have a big old pile of floppy disks. I've had a go with a couple of these um, and we have got some absolutely fantastic games in here. Um, one game, in fact, uh, Night Law is a game that um, you may have seen me play in one of my earlier um, videos. In fact, one of my earliest videos, I think it was the second, first or second one that I actually did. So um, some great games for us to be getting on with once we've got that sorted out. So that's the discs, loads of things there for us to play with. Must remember not to put them on top of the monitor because, uh, yeah, they'll get wiped. Right. Okay, next up, um, we've got a couple of um, couple of keyboards. So we've got one there and one there. So the keyboards, um, both of them need a bit of a clean. Um, but basically what I've done is I've, I've managed to find sort of two best condition keyboards, uh, which I'm going to be using uh, in the, in the um, cleanup. Um, these two, I've uh, got a couple of keys that aren't working or a couple of keys that are missing as you can sort of see up here. So um, easily fixable and I'm told uh, by a reliable source that um, if you put a bit of graphite on the bottom of these, if they're not membrane keyboards, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think they are, but you can actually put a little bit of graphite on the connectors at the bottom. Um, sometimes it could just wear out. Um, so it should be quite an easy fix if we want to use these keyboards later on. So that's a couple of keyboards that we've got there. Um, We've got loads and loads of ROMs. So um, basically the BBC um, was fantastic for this. Uh, so you're able to basically uh, expand it with lots of ROMs. So you could have the software on the ROMs, which is obviously much quicker than loading it up on a drive. Um, doesn't mean you've got to have extra storage, all of those kind of things. Um, so this is an expansion board. There is in fact one in here as well with loads of things on it. Um, and I've got loads more sort of chips and other bits and pieces here as well for uh, for me to kind of sort through and work out what they are. Some of them will be quite useful, no doubt. Um, then I've got uh, a number of um, floppy drives. So we've got this one here, which is a Watford Electronics floppy drive. Um, I haven't been able to get this one to work. This is a dual one. Uh, I've got two of these. Um, haven't been able to get these to work yet. Um, it might just be something that I'm doing wrong. Um, so I need to have a bit more of a look at that. I do have a, a single one as well, which is this one here, uh, which does work, uh, works quite nicely. So I've loaded some games up on that one, which is fantastic. Um, then uh, I have a couple of these bad boys. So we have a couple of these, these are joysticks. Um, and again, uh, tested one of these, it definitely works. Um, so that's great. This stuff has been really well looked after. It's just a bit dusty because it's been sitting in, a, in an attic for a while. So uh, hence the need for us to give it a bit of a clean. Um, what else have we got of interest? So we've got a couple of uh, motherboards. Um, so we've got this one, we've got two, they're basically the same thing. So in other, in other words, with the two keyboards and the two um, uh, motherboards, and we've essentially got two computers that we could use. Um, I do have a pair, spare power supply as well. Um, obviously these don't have a case so I'd need to go and locate a case uh, and that could be quite tricky to find. Um, but uh, this one in particular, so over here you can just see this is the um, EchoNet connector. This is the only one that I've got with an EchoNet connector and this is basically an early um, Ethernet port um, standard created by Acorn back in the day. So yes, um, Yes, I've got those. Um, and what else do we have in here? This is particularly interesting. So this is called uh, a bit stick. Um, now, apparently these are quite rare. And one of the first, I was chatting to someone today, actually said this was one of the first, um, at least sort of analog, um, I can't remember exactly what it was he said now, but uh, basically it's joystick for all intents and purposes. Um, it needs a ROM chip. So I need to check through to see if I have actually got the ROM chip that goes with that. Um, all right, so that is that. Um, and then the other few bits that I've got which are really fascinating is um, I have 
a few of these expansion things here. So if you look at these, I'm just about to fit these in the camera. So these are, if I turn actually turn this the other way, this one is a second processor. So I can plug this one in underneath uh, the BBC Micro and this will give me extra processing uh, power. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna work in the same way that you'd expect your multi-core processors to work in 2024. Um, but the nice thing about it is it's the same form factor, same sort of size as the actual case itself. So it will fit quite nicely in there. I've got three of these expansions. So I have um, a Teletext adapter, this one here. So for those of you who aren't old enough to remember or are from outside of the UK, um, Teletext was basically, well, that's what we had before we had the internet, essentially. This is um, a broadcast over the air alongside your television, a, um, a sort of information service, if you like. Uh, everybody remembers playing Bamboozle back in the 80s and 90s. It was a little sort of game, quiz game that you could play. Um, but uh, yeah, these, these were quite good. Obviously, this is now obsolete because... Um, it's not broadcast, it was broadcast over analog um, and uh, that is no longer broadcast in the UK certainly. So um, this is a bit surplus to requirements. I believe people still buy them and put Raspberry Pis in them. I don't know what to what end uh, they do that. Um, and then finally, uh, we have um, an IEEE uh, 488 interface, which essentially basically expands the connectivity of your machine. IEEE 488, essentially I think a serial standard. Um, that predates uh, USB. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, alongside that, uh, loads and loads of manuals as well, which I'll just talk you through now. So I'll keep this bit relatively short. I've got a whole box of interesting, well, it's interesting to me because this sort of thing interests me. It's not gonna be interesting to most of you. A crate full of books. Um, so anything from programming, Everything you need to know about the BBC Micro, Advanced User Guide, um, that one in particular uh, could be quite useful for um, some of the ROMs and other bits and pieces that I want to do. Also, if there's any kind of expansion stuff that I want as well. So that's all the books, lots and lots of things for me to look through and, and figure through. Um, usually there'll be lots of programming examples and things in these kind of books, um, which was super useful. Um, but uh, some useful commands in here which will help me to sort of identify, you know, maybe what ROMs I've got on board and, and uh, you know, access some of the programs that I've got. So yes, that's all of that. So that's all the stuff that I've got. Um, I do also have, um, like I mentioned earlier, I had a, 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 um, a faulty power supply. Now, with the BBCs, um, there is a well-known uh, problem with the power supply, with the capacitors. I didn't know this. Um, so when I bought them home, I switched on the, the cup monitor, uh, which you might have just seen in the video there, I'll show you a bit later on. Um, worked fine, switched on the BBC, worked fine. And considering these things have been in storage for years, um, absolutely incredible testament to the ruggedness of these machines. Um, then they started smoking and making a noise. And obviously the first thing I did was unplug them. Um, I, well, I did it with the first one, plugged the second one in, exactly the same thing happened again. Had a good look on um, the internet, and it turns out that um, there is a well-known issue with the capacitors in the BBC power supplies. Um, essentially, what happens is they, um, when they're very old, they just they just pop, essentially. So, um, obviously very alarming to start with, but what it means is that uh, actually, the it wasn't actually as catastrophic as I thought. I thought, oh, that's the end of it, they've, they've died. Um, you know, I'm, I'll, not, I'll, I'll have to completely replace the power supply. It was obvious that was where it was coming from. Um, but uh, actually it turns out that these capacitors are there essentially for noise reduction in your power supply. So you can actually continue to use the BBC with those capacitors blown uh, on your power supply. Now, I did have a bit more of a play with it just to see if I could get what, what was working and what wasn't and test the keyboards out, but I really didn't want to play with it for too long because obviously, um, you know, despite the fact that the internet says it's fine, um, it is a little bit disconcerting when you've got power supplies that fizz and pop when you're using your machine. So that was a kind of, yeah, turn that off and come back to that later. So what I've got here is um, essentially a modern replacement. I had a look around on the, um, the web and um, these are uh, essentially um, USB-C power supply replacements. Tiny little things, um, and uh, what we're basically gonna be doing is replacing the power supply. Once we've given the device a good clean, we're gonna be replacing the power supply with these um, little five volt USB power supplies and seeing how that works. Now, um, 
yeah, I will show you in the board in a second um, how easy I think this is going to be. Uh, and then obviously time will tell. Uh, this is going to be somewhat of a short video if um, if I end up breaking the machine off the back of it. But I don't, I don't think I will. Um, so yes, so now what I'm going to do is just talk you through a little bit about what I'm going to do today and uh, yeah, and, and get this thing back up and running and start playing some games on it. Okay, so let's talk through a little bit about what I'm planning to do today. So I've taken the lid off this as you can see. Um, and actually, to be perfectly honest, it's pretty clean inside here. So there's not going to be a lot that we're going to do. We're just going to get a, uh, a soft brush out to this and just give it a bit of a dust and a clean. Um, I'm going to try and get this keyboard cleaned up a little bit, but what I don't want to do is take all the keys off and give it a good clean. This keyboard is working fine, so I kind of don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of clean around the edges. Um, I'm obviously going to take out uh, this board, so you can probably see in here um, there are some... Oh, the, oh, and actually this one's slightly different. So the other board that I had... Um, oh yes, there are some screws in it. Yes, there's a few little screws. Not many, I think there's about six. Oh yeah, we can just see them in the corners there. So we're going to take the um, the screws out and the board out, take all the electronics out of this uh, and just give the unit a good clean um, with just some really gentle soap and a little bit of warm water. Um, give it a good dry, let it dry out, give it a good dry uh, and then we'll, we'll assemble, reassemble it. But obviously what's not going back in um, is this bad boy here. So. I knew that it was the power supply that was playing up because um, it was <laughs> the smoke was coming out of the actual switch on the power supply at the back uh, and it made quite a fun crackly noise and then there was lots of smoke and smell of electrical burning which is not really what you want so yeah we're not going to be um, we're not going to try and repair that um, ultimately you can see probably upside down but you can probably see the uh, warning on there which basically says unless you know what you're doing don't bother playing with this so I don't know what I'm doing so I'm not going to bother playing with it. Um, but you can see from the power supply that there are there, these sort of leads, just little positive negative leads um, that come out. And there's three connections, one there, one there, and one there underneath that expansion board. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that expansion board off, unplug it, and I'm going to take millions and millions of photographs just to be sure that I know what I'm doing. Uh, and then I'm going to come back and replace the power supply. Now, I do have a power supply open here at the moment. So if you can just about see this one, this is open. It's got the plug cut off, so I'm wondering whether this one actually is defunct, but you can just see in here, so we've got these little um, these little capacitors that sit in there. That's what blows, essentially. Um, so in fact, I think you can probably tell, I don't know if you can tell if that one's gone or not. Uh, but yeah, just in here, just in here are these uh, little capacitors that go. So um, we're not gonna bother trying to fix that. I think that's where they are anyway. I could be wrong, which is all the more reason for me not to play with it. Um, so yes, we will just be replacing all of that with, <laughs> with that. Now, obviously that's not the whole power supply because we need to find, we'll need to find a five amp, uh, sorry, three amp, five volt USB um, plug, which I do have. Um, uh, the, the Raspberry Pi ones actually are exactly that, they're 5 volt 3 amp ones, um, so they'd be ideal for this. So we're just going to hook that up, um, I've got some instructions that go with it, and um, and see how we get on and hope I don't blow the board up. And I don't see how because it's 5 volts, um, it's five, the, the power supply itself is 5 volts as well, so we should be in good shape. Um, but. Uh, Yes, it, it always a slight nervousness when you do these things. So, yes, let's um, let's crack on and uh, get this all cleaned up and get it set back up again. Okay, so first step, we're going to remove the keyboard. Now, this is nice and easy to do. It's just a little ribbon cable here. We're going to take it off the motherboard uh, and leave it actually attached to the keyboard. It's a bit easier to fit if we do that. Uh, and the other thing we're going to need to do is just remove the power supply from the... Um, uh, from the speaker, so that just comes away um, like this. Nice and easy. Um, red on the left, black on the right. Okay, so let's just move that out of the way. Okay, so that's keyboard, super easy. Um, now, next we're gonna remove the, um, the board on here. So I'm a bit concerned about this because this board actually, when I, I had a look at this earlier to see how easy the power supply was, I noticed that one of the legs uh, on here is actually a little bit bent. So I managed to get it back on. I am slightly worried about getting it back on again, although I do have another board um, that I can try if I have a problem with it. Um, otherwise, maybe I might actually have to do some soldering, which is gonna be terrible for everybody. But let me just remove this. Um, it's easy to remove, 
um, but it's a little bit more difficult to put back on. Uh, so let's just gently ease this out here. There we go, okay, all right. So we've removed that. Okay, so next um, we are going to remove the um, power supply. So I'm just gonna take a couple of photographs first just so I know where everything goes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've taken a few photographs. I'm just about ready now to start moving um, some of the electronics in the motherboard. Just make sure obviously that you are um, uh, statically uh, discharge so if you've got a wristband wear that or make sure you're just uh, touching metal surfaces uh, that are grounded so you don't end up uh, destroying the electronics that being said um, these have been sitting in in a loft in plastic crates for years and and they are remarkably robust but obviously they're very old so you don't want to take any chances with it really um, so yeah as I mentioned before I took out the um, this little board and you can see probably underneath here I don't know if you can quite tell from the camera image but the some of the pins this pin here in particular is a little bit uh, bent and I am quite worried about getting that back in not least because um, on here the uh, is actually the one of the main processors so um, uh, when you when you actually pop the board in uh, it sits in the processor slot there um, I think that's how it works anyway so um, so we've got to be super careful when we get that back into um, into the machine so I don't know I assume I assume it was working because um, everything on here was working so um, or the machine itself was working um, so uh, hopefully that means that this was okay but uh, yes uh, we, we will see when we get it all back together Okay, so let's um, start getting some things unplugged. So I'm gonna take the motherboard out first. I've got some photographs, so um, I need to just start removing these uh, pins, which is terrifying at best, because uh, they're quite hard actually to to spot. So yeah, um, one there, one there, and one there, and one there. And that is it and I'm just going to just take one more photograph of this just so I can see exactly where they're going so this is always just a good good thing to do um, just so you've got a reference point for where they sit just in case you can't remember for whatever reason so that crate out of the way so here we go we've got the screws in here one two three here so let's remove those come on nice and easily Just be mindful when you're removing these screws as well. I can see that uh, these ones here have just got some little um, uh, little uh, washes, little plastic washes in there. So just be careful not to lose those. Um, I assume that's just to protect the board from, um, in fact, yeah, there's one actually come off with the screw. So we want to be really, really careful with those. So let's not, let's not lose those. They're probably just insulating the board against the, any damage from the screw or shorts or anything else from that. So definitely want to be careful with that. Um, now we also have another little purple wire down here. So I'm just going to do another little snap there, um, which is also important that we make sure we remove that one and make sure we put it back in the right place afterwards. We go right okay so just taking lots of precautions here just to make sure that i don't cause myself any headaches right now the other thing i've got here is i'm just going to and again take one more snap of where these um where these little washers were because obviously it's be the ones that are closest to the electronics it's the important bit to make sure that i don't lose those because obviously if i short anything uh, that will be game over so we've took off uh five screws in total four of which had washers on um i don't know if that's absolutely intentional or not but uh whether there was one that shouldn't have had uh, or not i don't know so we might just have a look see if we can find another washer just to replace that one with all right now i'm pretty sure um we're going to need to remove the this at the back here now uh, this might just need a little bolt to remove so I'll be right back with you while I find the right tool to remove that with. So this was a little bit more tricky than expected ultimately um, this is the sort of AV or well not AV actually RF out in fact um, so this is what you would have plugged into your old-fashioned television back in the day unfortunately um, the the way that this works is it can't it can't pull back through the case this way because it's got a little um, lip on it 
um, and obviously you can't put it that way because that would require taking the entire motherboard um, through. So unfortunately I've had to just um, clip that. Now it should be easy to repair, but it's just a little, that wire is just a little soldered on, onto there. So hopefully we can just put it back together. Actually it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be using this output but obviously i do want to try and get it back together uh, as best i can so so that's what we've had to do with that which is a bit of a nuisance but um uh yeah that's the only way that we could have got that out of there so um let's see if we can try and get this lifted out now um should be able to uh so just very gently now i'm just going to remove this be careful not to let anything else fall off Okay, and there we go. So that's it now um, removed. So um, I'm just gonna put this in a safe place and then I'm gonna come back and remove the power supply. Okay, so now the power supply is disconnected. This should be relatively easy to remove it. Um, you can see the bottom of the um, machine here, which is something that you won't obviously see that often. Um, and uh, though uh, these are the expansion ports that you've got here. So you probably saw those on the bottom there, those little gray clips. Um, and then this is where we plug all these expansions in. So printer, disk drive, all of that kind of stuff plugs into the bottom here. Uh, and then the ribbon cables sort of, uh, we're able to sort of tidy away under here a little bit. It's a little bit messy. It's not quite the same as um, USB, but you've got to remember this is a unit that's almost certainly, um, if not older than, knocking on for uh, 40 years old. So um, with the power supply on this particular unit, um, we're missing a screw there. So um, just need to remove these two screws here and we should be able to get the power supply right out. So let's just remove these. And there we go, that's the power supply out. So what we might need to do is just remove the plug um, to get this to um, come out. Um, I don't know if the plug's gonna fit back in here. Um, let's have a look. Just have a look, see if I can see the Oh, I can smell the, uh, ah, here we go. So you can see, um, oh, this is the capacitor here, look. You can see uh, this is uh, all, uh, all the plastic's gone off the top. It's just completely melted away. And you can probably just tell from inside here. I don't know if I can just move that out of the way. You can just see that it's just completely blown. Um, so yes, uh, hence the reason for us needing to do something a little bit different here. So let's get this uh, plug off. Uh, I don't want to cut the plug off really, uh, although it is a shielded plug, so we're probably gonna have to, uh, unless it will fit through there. I'm guessing probably not. Oh, it will, it will. That's fantastic news. I really didn't wanna have to uh, remove it because what I might do at a later date um, is either um, pass these on to somebody who wants them, um, obviously, or just uh, if I've got the, if I'm brave enough, I might just, uh, I might just recap these myself when I get a moment. So we'll see, but I don't certainly don't want to lose that. So we'll keep that one uh, and put that to one side. All right, so now we have uh, an empty case. Um, and actually, when you look at the color on the uh, base of it uh, around here, actually it's in pretty good condition. A little bit of yellowing around. Um, that we'll need to um, just, well, I'm, I'm not gonna, to be honest, I'm not gonna retro bright this stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a clean. It's in pretty good condition. Um, so this really just needs just a, a bit of a wipe out just to remove the dust and just give it a bit of a clean. Um, the top I think probably wants more uh, of a clean. So we're just gonna take that now and uh, give it a bit of a clean and dry it off and I will be right back with you. Okay, so we've given that a good clean. Now, one of the things I didn't do was to soak um, soak this in water. I think it, it just didn't make sense to do that um, <clears throat> because I mean this black bit here is actually stuck on so this will come off uh, if you soaked it um, and also there are lots of sort of stickers and things inside as well and you can just see those uh, which I didn't want to to damage so just wiped around very gently around here very gentle soap you know you think about it this way would you want you know are you happy for it to be on your skin then it can be happy to be on here um, just uh, some um, Ultimately, just hand soap uh, is all that we've used. Um, the bottom part didn't actually need much of a clean, um, just a bit of a clean, just remove some of the grime inside. Um, it was just a little bit, you know, just years of, of dirt, really. I mean, these machines have been so well looked after um, that they were just a bit grubby, that was all. They weren't really in, in any bad way at all. Um, and obviously, when, you, when you're removing, um, when you're doing a BBC, uh, you need to remove this little sort of plastic thing that sits in the top here. Um, when I was at school, um, used to have a little cardboard insert. In fact, I have one here. 
a uh, little cardboard insert that used to sit underneath there and you could put different ones in for different applications and it would tell you all the buttons and function keys and things like that which is kind of cool so um so obviously took that off uh just to be able to give that a good clean and clean underneath there as well um if i show you the old ones if i just show you the lid from the old one um you can get an idea um they were in a similar sort of state in terms of um how dirty they were this one's a little bit more yellowed but you can see sort of how how filthy it is um and uh, yeah just needed a good a good clean this one's got a few scratches on it as well but as you can see really um you get the idea that this one has come up a lot better so um definitely worth taking the time didn't take a long time to do it um like i said just very uh, warm uh, water with some just very gentle soap uh, and took a dishcloth to it um on the top here and um, took a very soft scourer because it's got sort of like a textured effect to it so there's quite a lot of grime in there and to be honest there's still a little bit in here but i really didn't want to damage the case um anymore um in terms of retro brighting for the future so for those of you who don't know um, retro bright is basically um, a way of bringing um, old computers back to sort of their original color um, and you can see from this one here uh, where is it on this side i think you can see where there's been a sticker there's just a very slight um change in coloration but they were sort of a, a kind of off-white uh cream color anyway so i'm not going to retro bright these i think it would actually take it too far um so i'm not going to do that retro brighting is basically using something like hydrogen hydrogen peroxide and, and sunlight to essentially bleach it back to um its original color so we, we don't want to be doing that so yes right so next step then um we're gonna start to reassemble this and um hopefully get it switched on and uh, going um, before i before i do that i am going to give the keyboard a little bit of a clean like i said before i'm not going to do anything too clever with it i'm just going to use um just a cloth um and just very gently wipe the keys i'm not going to remove the keys i don't want to damage any of the springs or anything underneath the keyboard is working fine so it didn't make any sense to do that um and then with the motherboard i'm just going to take a very soft brush and give it a dust but to be honest with you uh, like I said, there's there's very little residue on the motherboard, so we probably don't need to go too crazy with that, and I certainly don't want to damage that either. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go and um, start cleaning the keyboard up, and I will be back with you shortly. You can see here, look, the amount of dirt that's coming off these. So these are quite dirty. So I'm just very gently, I don't want to take any of the print off it. I'm just going to give them just a little bit of a clean with this cloth here. Um, and then uh, hopefully they're going to come up lovely. I'll be right back once I've done it. Okay, so we've given the keyboard a good clean now. Um, so a couple of things to bear in mind. Obviously, if you're using uh, a cloth, um, make sure that it's, um, you know, obviously as, as dry as you can possibly get it. Again, use just a bit of gentle soap on the top keys just to kind of take off the initial bit of grime. Um, but then I've also used this, which is everybody's friend, um, isopropanol alcohol, uh, which is fantastic for doing any kind of cleaning. This is brilliant for cleaning um, games cartridges and all that sort of stuff as well. So I've used some of that uh, along with some cotton buds. Um, so these are just bamboo cotton buds. Uh, which I've just used just for getting into the, um, the crevices here as well. So without taking any keys off at all, um, I've given this a good old clean. Now obviously the, the, the letters themselves are kind of, um, they're a bit yellowed as well themselves. Um, so I think that's probably, I think they probably were white actually. Um, but you know what, I'm gonna leave those. I'm not gonna try and retro bright that or do anything with those either. So keyboard's just about ready to go in. Um, next job is just to give the motherboard um, just a bit of a clean. So uh, I'm just gonna swap that over and just give that a bit of a clean with the brush. Um, and then we should be in a position where we can start to reassemble. So, as I mentioned before with the motherboard here, um, ultimately it is in pretty good shape. Um, it's actually not that dirty at all, it's, it's um, not even really dusty. So, uh, I'm just going to give this just a little bit of a dust with this very soft brush here, just to get rid of some of the dust that's in here. Um, just be very, very gentle with this, um, just to just tighten the top. And you can see, um, there is very little dust here, so mostly just around the ports actually. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, in fact, to be honest with you, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, the other motherboard that I've got is a lot dustier, so I assume it's been exposed uh, a bit more. So when I come to do that, um, I'm obviously just gonna give that um, a bit more of a clean, but you could also, if you wanted to, um, just vacuum. Um, if you really wanted to do that, you could do that. Um, but again, just be 
very, very careful when you're doing that uh, about making sure that you don't um, ultimately cause yourself um, any problems uh, by sort of going too rough with it. So these are obviously very delicate, and very old components. So yeah, so I think really, I mean, actually, to be honest, I'm, I'm probably not gonna do any more than that. I think this is in such good condition anyway that um, I probably just don't want to disturb it for the sake of it. So yes, right. So next job then um, is that we are going to um, pop the power supply into the uh, case that we've cleaned uh, and then start assembling things back up again. So let's do that next. Okay, so with the power supply, um, we've got a few leads here. So I've got two, so we've got two lots of everything. So I'm just going to separate those out. So the blue one is that purple lead that we had. That's the earth. Um, and then we've got three sets of um, positive and negative. Um, so it's one, two, and three. Uh, so those are the ones that we need. We're going to put those back in the box. Over there, that's for the other one for another day. We've got the power supply itself. And then we also have um, a couple of um, little sort of mount, a little pack of, of screws that we're going to use for mounting. So this basically, the little got the little brass uh, mount is going to sit here. Uh, we're going to screw that into the into the uh, use the screw through the bottom of the case, um, and then we're going to have a little screw that sits in the top uh, inside the power supply to hold it in place there. So um, that's going to just sit uh, like this in there on top of that mounting point, and that is it. For actually getting that connected so let's um let's get that put in let's do that first this is probably going to be a speed up moment so uh yeah let's uh, let's crack on and do that and i'll be back with you in a moment okay so we just put the little brass mount point so that's just connected through one of the existing um, holes that was already in the case underneath. Um, there's a little washer here that just goes underneath that. I assume that's just to sort of protect it a little bit. And then what we're going to do is just sit this on top of the um, little brass screw and just screw that in. It is actually a little bit fiddly. I'm just trying to do this before I recorded. Um, let's see if we can get that to go in. There we go. That is going in nicely. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's spinning around at the bottom, so let's just give that a tighten in there. There we go. You can see at the bottom there, that's just a nice little fit. It's obviously very, very white, so it's quite obvious that that wasn't the original one. Um, and look at the size of this thing. Um, it's absolutely tiny. When you compare it to the power supply that we had before, which was an absolute beast. So it looked like this. Um, that's quite a difference. Um, so next thing we need to do now um, is get the motherboard put back in um, and start getting it all hooked up. So I'm just gonna screw the motherboard in and then I'll show you how I get that um, wired up. Okay, so we've slotted that back in, nice and easy to put in. We're gonna deal with these, um, uh, with the RF connector later on, if at all. Um, I probably will. Um, just solder the wire back onto the connector just so it's there uh, and, and not a problem. Let's move these things out of the way here for a moment. Okay, so we're just gonna pop the screws back in, remembering obviously that we've got some of these little washers that we wanna be paying attention to. So we had some up the top here. So just make sure that's in place. Um, and uh, we had some uh, down the bottom here as well. Uh, so let's get this one in first. Now, I don't know whether the other two uh, missing washers, whether they were ever washers on there or not, I'm just putting them back in the same place. Um, I've just made sure that the ones that are sort of furthest from any components are the ones that don't have the washers on. Um, I'm slightly nervous about that, but um, it was working without them before, so I assume that's okay. So I've just made sure that the washers on, we can't see the one at the back here. So there's one here uh, and one here and one here. So these are all the ones that are nearest components. So we've got the little plastic washers on just to make sure um, we haven't got it and that's nice and secure in there fantastic okay so next is the interesting part what we're going to do now is we are going to connect up back up the power supply so um basically i've got my photograph which i've got handy so um we can start um, just wiring that up now so 
Um, let's um, start moving forward with that. Okay, so the way this works, we've got um, we've got our ground on here. This is going to be a little bit fiddly. Apologies if my head gets in the way. Um, push that on there. The negative one ports are at the back here. So just push these on. They just push on, uh, nice and easily. It says, <laughs> is that on? That one's probably the most awkward. There we go. So the negative ones at the back here. It does say actually on the board what what connects to what. Um, but just just the website. Um, uh, that it comes on um, is uh, pretty good for telling you what you need to do. Um, let's just make sure that's on properly. Okay, that's the other one there. Just make sure they are nice and secure on there as well. Now, I, I know already I'm going to be um, having an interesting problem with this because we've got um, over on this side of the board here, where we took them off earlier, um, we had the, um, the little door to the board that sat on the top of that, and we wanna make sure that uh, it fits on top neatly. So we are gonna have to actually bend these pins around, which makes me slightly nervous, but um, we will manage it for sure. Push that one on there. There we go. You see the little, um, little wire. Uh, the covers will come over the top of those as well. So, there we go. Alright, so I'm just going to inspect to make sure that is all on, everything looks good, all looks okay. Alright, okay, so the next step now is to hook it up to the motherboard. Um, so first things we want to do is to get the um, earth one uh, the ground one, I should say, over to um, this side here. Fantastic. Um, we might just get some cable uh, ties later on just to make sure that um, uh, that uh, we're all good there. So, okay. Uh, next one is um, this one here. So what I'll do is I'll plug these in and then I'm just going to double check. so delicate I can feel there's already a bit of metal fatigue in that there okay so that's it all hooked up so what we're going to do now um, I'm going to get the keyboard back on here um, and, um, and I'm going to go and find a 5 volt power supply to plug in and see if it powers on okay so uh, we have now uh, connected all our wires up I think I've double checked it I think everything looks okay now um, we've hooked the keyboard back up so it's just the reverse of what we did before just by um, hooking it up to the, um, the speaker port at the bottom here and then it's the, the ribbon cable is super short so I'm just not going to uh, mess with that. Um, so that all looks good. Um, managed to get the daughter board back on um, and I think that's in place that's uh, nice and uh, good. So we've got all our ROMs sitting on there all ready to go and our main processor on there ready to go. So let's turn it on and see if we've got life first of all and then we shall hook it up to a monitor and see how we're doing. So. Um, I mentioned before about using, um, here it is, just the Raspberry Pi um, power supplies. Obviously these are going to be reliable ones. Um, this is a 3 amp um, 5 volt Raspberry Pi uh, USB-C one. It's what I use for my um, Picade and my uh, little Raspberry Pi uh, setup that I did on my video a little while ago. You'll have seen that. So there we go. All right. So if we get a beep, we know we're good. So let's go for it. So switch on at the back. That is a good sign. Got a little white light on there. We've got a beep. We've got lights. We think we're good. So let's, um, what next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the monitor up. Um, so I'll probably just tidy up a little bit around here, hook the monitor up and um, see if we've got anything on the screen. So I've got my camera mobile now. Look at this cup monitor, isn't it amazing? I'm just gonna give this a good old clean as well. It's a little bit uh, on the dirty side at the moment, but it is, this is the this is the sort of thing I remember from school. It's absolutely brilliant. So we're just gonna flick this on at the back. I know this works, I've tried it already. So I'll just find the switch here. Okay, here we go. Right, moment of truth. Do we get anything to the screen? 
Yes, we do. Look at that. We have success. There you go. In the words of Jeremy Clarkson, I did a thing. I did a thing. So it all seems to be working great now. Um, so basically what's left for me to do at this moment is to, um, to get it basically all finally put back together. So I'm going to put the case back on. I'm going to tidy these cables up as well. I'll just show you that I've got some cable ties. Um, so I'm going to give those a bit of a tidy up. Get the lid back on. Um, I will probably just solder this uh, RF piece later on, I think. Um, I may or may not do that in a moment, but um, yeah, basically get it all back on. Otherwise, I'll just, I will just put some tape over those to make sure they don't short anywhere. Uh, and then we'll get a game loaded and see how we get on. Okay, so here we go. This is my newly cleaned up and restored BBC B. It is looking wonderful. I'm gonna turn it off and on again, just so you can hear that beautiful beep. There it goes, okay. So a few things that I learned along the way, uh, when I was putting the case back together again, uh, I realized that the uh, power supply um, comes with different lengths of cables, which I hadn't quite appreciated. Maybe it was in the instructions, I didn't, certainly didn't see it. Um, but uh, it meant that I needed to take the daughter ball off because typically um, the one that needed the long cable was the one that was the most difficult to get to. So I had to remove the daughter board again with all the ROM chips on uh, and uh, that was a bit of a nuisance getting that back on um, a second time. So I'm pretty sure that is the last time that's going to want to be moved because um, I had some problems it wouldn't boot. Um, given the joystick a clean as well and, uh, and the floppy drive, um, also just <laughs> really, really stupid uh, moment. Uh, one of those dolt moments uh, where I realized, um, obviously putting the new power supply in, um, when you plug the floppy disks into these BBC Micros, there's a, a data cable that goes underneath the system and also a power lead which plugs into, yeah, you guessed it, the old power supply. So of course now I've got the new power supply, I had nowhere to power the um, floppy drive from, which was somewhat of a nuisance. Um, so what I've done, um, just for the sake of demonstration, and we'll see if it works in a minute, is I have rather uh, probably dangerously plugged the old power supply back in uh, and just plugged the um, floppy drive into that, um, uh, just to see if that's working. Um, let me just have a look at this cup monitor here. Look, look at this. It's all nice and clean. It just, just wiped clean. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, so pleased with that. So let's uh, see if the floppy drive will boot. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but let's give it a go anyway. Yeah, that isn't working. It just doesn't want to play ball. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find a power supply for the floppy drive um, or alternatively look at something different, such like a GoTech um, for that. But I'm, I'm loving this five volt uh, um, USB-C power supply. It's really good. And there's a joystick there as well, as you can see. Really, really cool. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate because it means I can't show you any games running on here right now, uh, which is a bit rubbish for a retro games channel. But um, Hopefully this was a little bit interesting, watching the, the restoration there from beginning to end. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too boring, but it was really good fun just to kind of have a play. Oh, I did put the um, I did put the RF connector back in. That was, oh my goodness me, that was an absolute nuisance. There was lots of little washes and things you had to make sure went over the wires. I soldered and unsoldered that thing about four times before I got everything in the right order, and then it was a real faff to get the... Uh, the nut threaded back on there. So uh, my recommendation would be don't bother unless you're planning on plugging it into um, a uh, RF connection on an old fashioned television, um, generally don't bother. If you've got a cup monitor, you don't need it. Um, if you've got a modern TV, um, I suppose that might be the only way, but uh, yeah, certainly, um, certainly if you can avoid doing that when you take it all apart, do it. Or alternatively, just don't bother cleaning the bottom section. I mean, mine, mine definitely didn't really need it. I mean, it looks lovely now. I'm really pleased with how it looks, uh, but ultimately it did desperately need it. So I'm going to just return to Studio One uh, just to wrap up and tell you what's coming next. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See you on the other side. Okay, so slight hack for you here. Uh, obviously, we've got the um, CRT going absolutely berserk, but uh, what I've done is I've plugged in the other user and I've put the power supply in for the floppy drive in there. And you can see, although it's flushing like crazy, you can see uh, that this is loaded up. So let's just click on, click on uh, Night Law. This is a game that I actually played on the BBC emulator about six months ago when I started my channel. Um, so let's just start that up. There we go, there it is, look at that. Uh, it's kind of difficult to play this with the camera as well, but. Uh, uh, let's forward. 
Oh, there we go. So there you go. Proof indeed that it's working at least. Oh, there we are, changing. Well, there you go. <laughs> Much like the video that I did before, I died immediately. So yes, uh, challenge will be then to find a uh, alternative power supply for the uh, drive. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was it. Proof indeed that the games are in fact working. Hey there, welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that or found that interesting at the very least. Uh, apologies to anyone who's a serious uh, restoration person that uh, they were probably cringing at some of the things I was doing there. I, I can only apologise. Hopefully, uh, you know, this this is a bit of an experiment for me. I've not done anything quite like this before. I built a lot of PCs and restored PCs and things back in the past, but not not like this where I've sort of dismantled things and, and given them a good clean and all that kind of stuff there. So just, just go easy if it's your first time doing it. The beauty of these old 80s machines is that whilst they are very old and they are still quite delicate, and you do have to treat them with lots of care um, they are very very serviceable and accessible so um, if you're feeling confident enough um, and you know that there aren't there isn't any sort of electronics any soldering that you need to do um, definitely give it a go and just uh, breathe some new life, life into some of those units a lot of consoles and old machines from that era are just kind of one board um, so you know you can kind of take them apart and give them a good clean um, you know, devices like the, the Dreamcast, for instance, they have, uh, there's quite an active uh, community that, that gets rid of the old cases, which go quite yellow and replaces them in all sorts of funky colors and other things like that. So, you know, if you're feeling confident enough um, to do it, definitely give it a go. It's not gonna be a lot different to what I've done today. A few things that I learned. Um, one, if you're doing the USB power supply, um, just check the length of your wires. Seems like a really obvious thing to do now uh, Now that I've uh, done it, but you know, <laughs> I feel stupid, but you know, it's a lesson that these things are always like, oh yeah, moments, that oh yeah, moments. As was the floppy drive power supply, that was definitely an oh yeah moment. I did, uh, uh, one of the important lessons off the back of that actually was I did go out to Facebook and find a couple of communities, ask them about getting a power supply for the floppy drive. I won't bore you with the details of what I was gonna do. And they all said, why the heck have you replaced the power supply? Just refurbish the power supply and use the original connector as nature intended. And once it's been refurbished, it'll last for donkey's years. So I kind of wish I'd done that before, not least because the cost of refurbishment was about the same as the cost of the USB-C power supply. Um, but it will still be useful because I do have um, a couple of other machines that don't have cases and they don't also have power supplies. So, uh, you know, I, I, I will be able to just check that they work quite quickly and easily if I want to and I might be able to put them in you know find some other funky case to put them in so it could be um, quite good if you if you want to do something like that so I'm not completely gutted that I I, uh, I, I bought them I'll probably sell one of them uh, and keep the other and then I'm going to send the, the other power supplies off for refurb um, and so they, they'll actually go back in and I'll show you those back in with all the cables all tidied up and, and uh, sorted out inside um, which will be really, really nice, and I'll have the floppy drive working, and we'll be able to do some some cool stuff on it. So, yeah, uh, the other lesson, therefore, then is um, go check out some forums before you kind of tackle it. So, if I was going to go and do the Dreamcast, for instance, go check out a forum and, and check out some some ideas for people that have already had a go with that. So, yeah, really, really good, um, really enjoyable. Uh, like I said, restoration probably isn't the right word for this it was just kind of like a bit of a tidy up and a clean up and an opportunity for me to have a bit of a tinker and look into all of the things that i've managed to very fortunately acquire from my my friend's dad um so yes a uh, big shout out and thanks to to them for that um absolutely brilliant i'm looking forward to getting some time um playing on on there as well and getting my kids into it and telling them what it was like when i was at school back in the day back in the olden days when the computers came on trolleys and there was one in the whole school so yes, that's it for for that then. Um, hope that was useful. Coming up on the channel, um, we've got the rest of this month. Obviously, as you know, is my PlayStation One promotion month. Uh, it's a month with is the um, is what I'm calling this. So it's a month with PlayStation One at the moment. Playing through lots of PlayStation One games, uh, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, so there'll be another game review for that probably next week. Obviously, I had Time Crisis last week. Please go check that out if you fancy a look at Time Crisis again and uh then we'll work, we'll have the main review for that i've got the the spectrum coming which is launching uh next month 
Um, looking forward to that coming, so we'll be having a play with that. That will probably be, uh, I think that's back end of November uh, that that comes, so that's a good way off yet. And I've got the Lego build to do as well, which I think I will do next month. So lots and lots of exciting things to come on the channel, at least I think so anyway. Uh, you absolutely know what I'm about to say now, right? If you watch this channel, you know what I'm about to say. Please do hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy these. Thank you so much for everybody who does that. Um, it's, it's a really great motivator. And I know I say it every time, but I really do appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably it for today. So, uh, yeah, until the next time, take care of yourselves and see you around.